Hello, I'm Jen Barnaby, and this is the next in my series of videos on Apache NiFi. It's part one in a two-part series on building a simple flow. In this part, we'll talk about adding and configuring processors, and in part two, we'll talk about connecting the processors and running them. Let's get started. To add a processor, go up to the components section of the toolbar and drag a processor icon to the graph. This opens an add processor window. Here, you can either scroll through the list of processors to find the one you want, or you can use the tag cloud to reduce the processor list by category according to what you're looking for. If you see a processor you're interested in, you can select it and see a short description below. Once you get used to using NiFi, you'll probably already know the name of the processor you want. And in that case, you can simply type the name of the processor up here in the filter bar. When you see it appear in the list, you can double click it to add it to the graph. Let's demonstrate that one more time. Drag the processor icon to the graph, type the name of the processor you want, and double click it to add it. It's pretty simple. Now we can see these two processors are invalid because they have warning symbols in the upper left hand corner of the processor face. If we hover over that warning symbol, it'll tell us what the processor needs to be valid. These are the minimum requirements for configuration and connecting the processors to make them valid. To learn more about a processor, you can right click it and go to the usage. This brings up the documentation for the processor. It provides a description of what the processor does, the properties that need to be configured in the processor, and the relationships for that processor. To configure a processor, simply right click and go to configure. This brings up a window with several tabs at the top. We have settings, scheduling, properties, and comments. The comments field is just an optional field to put any notes that you want, perhaps to yourself or maybe team members. The properties tab is the main place where you can configure specific information that the processor needs to run properly. Some properties are listed in bold and others are not in bold. This indicates that these properties are required and must have a value in order for the processor to run. The ones that are not in bold are optional. For anything in this window that you see a question mark, you can hover over that question mark to get more information. In the Properties tab, this is particularly important. Not only does it tell you what the property is looking for, but it'll also tell you if the property has a default value and what it is, and it'll tell you whether the property supports the NiFi expression language. To learn more about the NiFi expression language, see the expression language guide in the Help section. Another thing that this will show you is a history of the changes to this property. So for example, if I change this property from false to true and click apply, and then later go back into that processor to configure it again, if I hover over the question mark this time, it actually shows me a history of when that change was made. This can be really useful for troubleshooting or determining when issues may have come up in your flow and why a change might have affected uh, what's going on in your flow. In this case, we're going to leave the default settings for this processor and move on to the scheduling tab. The scheduling tab tells the processor how to know when to run, how often to run, and how long to run each time it runs. So here we have some scheduling strategies that the processor can use. Timer driven tells it to run on a certain interval. Event driven tells it to run when an event occurs, which is typically when a flow file enters a feeding uh, connection to it. And cron driven is sort of like timer driven, but it allows you to set a very specific time for the processor to run, such as hour of the day, day of the week, day of the month, that type of thing. The run schedule, especially with timer driven, will determine what interval it's going to run at. So if it's set to zero seconds, that means it'll run as often as possible. You might want to have a processor run only one, once every one second or once every hour or so. That's what you can change there. Concurrent tasks tells the processor how many tasks to do concur concurrently each time it runs. And again, for all of these things, you can hover over them to see the question mark um, information that's provided.
The run duration is how long the processor will continue to run each time it runs. Going over to the settings tab, we see a field where we can change the name of the processor. By default, the name is going to be the type of processor that it, that it is. Um, the reason why it's useful to name a processor something specific to your flow is, especially if you have several instances of the same processor on your graph, this helps you distinguish one from another very easily, especially when you're looking at logs and bulletins and that type of thing. Processors also have a unique ID number, so again, in the logs you can distinguish one from another very easily that way. And then you have penalty duration and yield duration. Penalty duration has to do with um, how long a processor penalizes a flow file if it doesn't process it successfully. And yield duration has to do with how long the processor itself will yield if for some reason it can't run the way it needs to. You can always hover over these question marks to get more information about these fields. The bulletin level is the level at which the processor will produce bulletins on the face of the processor. Um, by default, it's set to warning, which means you'll only see bulletins when there are warnings or errors in the log for that processor, and that's usually the way you want to leave it. For this log attribute, we'll actually set it to info because we want to see the um, attributes that the processor is logging each time, and that way we'll see them in the bulletins for this particular processor. Up here to the right, we have auto-terminate relationships. What this means is that when you're done working on the files in your flow, at the end point of your flow, you can tell NiFi, and you should tell NiFi, that you're done working on them. You do that by selecting a relationship that the files will go down when you're done with them. So for this example, this little two processor flow we have, we're actually gonna send files to this log attribute, log their attributes, and then we're done with them. So when they go down the success relationship for this processor, we can terminate them. And we indicate that by checking this box. Now we're ready to apply. You can see that this processor is actually now valid because it has a stop symbol and it's ready to be played. Let's take a look at the generate flow file processor. We'll go through this one a little faster. We right um, click and select configure. We're going to change um, nothing on the settings tab. So we're going to leave everything as it is. We're going to leave the bulletin level at warning. We're not going to terminate any relationships here. We're going to set the scheduling to one second because this processor can produce um, test files very fast and we, we don't want it to overload the system. So we're just going to set it to run only once every one second instead of as often as possible. For properties, we're going to tell it the size of the files we want it to create. That's a required property and you have to enter that information. So I'm going to just put 10 kilobytes. Note that I have to put the unit of measure when I put in the file size. So you can't simply write 10 or 100 or whatever. You have to indicate kilobytes, megabytes, and so forth. Otherwise, the warning symbol on the face of the processor will t give you an error. We click OK. All the other um, properties here already have default values that we're going to keep. And now we're just going to click Apply. Now this processor is still not valid because it needs a relationship between it and the log attribute. Adding relationships is very easy, but there's a lot to know about um, adding the connection that the relationship runs down. So I'm gonna leave that for the next video. We'll talk about connecting these two processors and then running them. Check back for that video next.